So uh, today we're going to talk um, about uh, all the different types of variables in Python. It's going to be a little bit of a review. Uh, and we're going to talk about scope, which I know we've hinted at, but not really uh, talked about specifically. Uh, and then I want to talk about, um, we're going to hit classes again, because you're going to be using them pretty much a ton from here on out, especially with you. We're going to be doing a lot of object-oriented programming. Uh, and then um, uh, that's it. So it's kind of like a mishmash of different topics that uh, we're just going to kind of hit one after the other, okay? Um, so uh, I'm going to make a file uh, or a project, I guess, for us to just like mess around and write some code in. Um, so we all remember how to do this, right? I'm going to do mkdir, dir, and uh, let's just call it uh, variable. And I'll cd into that and open it in VS Code. And now we're done with that tiny terminal. We can use this one. Like that. Pull this up. Uh, my, okay, so we have a uh, file just to kind of mess around with here. So we have um, different types of variables in Python. Um, there's a uh, local, can we see that? Get out of here, okay. Local variables, there are uh, instance bars, there are class bars, there are global and there are constants. Uh, what is a local variable? What do I? What does that mean when I say local variable? Okay. It could be defined in a function. Yeah, it could be defined in a function. Yeah, so uh, actually, as we're saying that, I think uh, inside the function or inside the current scope of like where we're working, yeah, yeah. Uh, right, right, yeah. Uh, it could be inside, an if, it could be like local to that if statement, right? Um, what do we mean when, what is, maybe we need to back up in a second and say, what is scope? What do we, when we talk about the scope of a variable, we hit this really um, briefly last week. Yeah, where it's where it's accessible, right? Where it, where um, where I can, can get at it, and usually the way that that works is, um, like uh, if I have um, a variable right just sitting right out here, everything I write below this I can access me, right? It's kind of sitting all the way up at the top of my program. If I write a method here or a function. I could print name right here, right? I don't even have to pass it in. Does that make sense? Like, so it's like it it um it like trickles down, right? Uh, same thing if I had an if um <laughs> same thing. So we should get my name printed twice here. Uh, why didn't it print? Oh, because I didn't call that function. Cool, but what happens if I take name and I bring it down here, I put it inside this function. I'm gonna call the function up here and then I try to print name. It's gonna air out, right? It's gonna say name is not defined. And that's because name now where I defined it is scoped to this function, right? can't go up, but it could go down if I had more if statements or whatever. Does that make sense? Yeah, scope is pretty pretty clear on scope. Okay, cool. So when we talk about a local variable, name is local to this function right here, right? When I had it up top, it was, I mean, it was technically global, but it was like local to basically my whole program, right? Um, cool, so that's local variables. Uh, instance variables, what is that? That's new to us, or newish to us. Yep. 
like when we have a class, right? So let's make a class. Employee. Uh, let me fix my. Uh, Uh, so when I make a class, what is my init function poly? What does this init function do when I make a class? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so every time I create an instance of employee, or every time I basically call on the employee class and pass it the parentheses, right, I'm calling this init function. Which is going to create, um, which is actually just going to run and do whatever I tell it to. What I usually do is pass it any instance variables that I want to keep track. So let's do that real quick. So, asking, okay. And then I have to set those, right? First name, first name. Last name, last name, and dot a. Okay. And then, uh, oh, let's do this. So we can do, so this is probably what we're used to doing. We could run uh, a function here. We can also do, uh, we're going to do this. Way. We're going to say self.email equals uh, f. First name, dot last name, at the cool. Uh, oh, and then we might want to do more. Okay, so we've created a new class, right? We didn't run anything, so we don't have any instances of this yet. Um, but um, when we create this new class, we're going to set first name, last name, the pay, and then um, we're going to create an email for this user, also using the first name and the last name, right? Um, and then also, do these two things have to be the same? Do I have to say self so first name is first name? No, we're clear on that too, right? I could just do like name equals first name. So just like any other function, right? I'm passing in these variables, and then I'm just using the parameters that were passed in to set the instance variables. Now these instance variables are scoped to what? If I do, let's say, uh, let's make an employee. Uh, let's make John. Let's not capitalize his name. Let's pay him $500 a year. Um, okay. Uh, and uh, cool. Now I'm going to do e uh, print e dot first name is going to print what? Well, what's what exactly? John, right? So this um, what I want you to start to understand is like for each for for e. The local or the variable first name is only scoped to this specific instance, right? It's not accessible anywhere else. And each time I create a new instance, it's going to have instance variables that are only scoped to that instance, right? Um, so if we make one more, um, uh, all this John, all this me. Uh, well, uh, and I print this, uh, Josh dot, um, last name is going to print what? My last name. Yeah. Which is what? Aletto. Yeah. Cool. John Aletto. Sweet. Um, so John's, or actually make more sense if I do first name so we can see the difference. So now, for John, first name is scoped to him, first name is scoped to me, right? Same exact name for the variables, but since they're inside the scope of the instance, they can retain different values, right? 
Same things with functions. If we come up here with a function and I have a uh, uh, func one, and that has a variable x equals like three, and I have def func two, that can also have a variable x equals hello, and they won't conflict, right? Because they're encapsulated in that scope. Um, but if I remove this and I tried to set both of them out here, what's going to happen? If, what would happen if I printed X uh, right here on line eight? What would it say? It would just say hello, it would overwrite it, right? So scope, um, I'm, it sounds like you guys have a good handle on it. It is a thing that you want to just keep in mind as you're going because it's very easy to forget what scope you're in or not realize what scope you're in and what ends up happening is you'll a, overwrite um, a variable that you didn't mean to, or B, you'll try to access the value of a, of a variable. I, you'll very often see like, blah, blah, blah is not defined. How many times have you seen that? Well, this variable is not defined. Half the time you're, and you're like, I wrote it right there, right? I can see it. And half the time it's just because you're not, you're, you're scoping. Right Go ahead. So I know that we're working in pipelines, but I'm just sitting in JavaScript right now, and we do a, uh, Dot in, uh, brackets. So I think do it with this mark. You can't do it that way. You can go to the dot. You mean like this? Yeah. Yeah, and then wait. Sorry. Let me make sure I know. Just like that. Yeah. Is that the same thing for this? That's. I don't think that's going to work here. And this is just syntax stuff, right? So an object in JavaScript, you can get away with both dot, and you can do it this way. Okay. I just want to yeah. make sure. No, it's a good question. Yeah, yeah. Conceptually, same thing. Syntactically, they're just different ways of doing it. So this one will be the object of the pipeline? Yes. Yes. Now, we use those brackets if it's a dictionary, remember, but not if it's an, not if it's an instance of an object. Right. But because it's a fault and it's not going to be this, would it work the same way? Um, I guess the question I Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yes, yeah, yeah. And we're going to go over specifically classes in JavaScript. Like, we're going to talk about exactly how to do that. We're just, it's not coming until later. We're going to mostly be working in Python for the next few weeks. So, we'll get to it. Um, did you have a question? No? Other questions before I move forward? Uh, yeah. I was going to say dictionaries don't operate the same way in the scope, right? Like, you can manipulate a dictionary sometimes in a function and it still be in the Like, it'll still I'm not be sure what you're asking. Like you, uh, you create a dictionary outside mm -hmm. of a function, and then inside a function, you can try to manipulate that dictionary without passing the function. You can, like, I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident in JavaScript, you can still manipulate that dictionary, even though it's. Yeah, like, like let me see if I got this. Or so, sorry, yeah. Even if you did, like, the opposite, I thought, like, when you try to manipulate a dictionary, it would. Point towards its memory location, kind of manipulate it regardless. I don't, as far as I know, the scope still applies to the dictionaries, but I mean, there might be a quirk to that, um, but I don't, I don't know. I was actually just thinking, there's a weird, like a little bit of a quirk, I mean, it kind of looks like you can kind of grab it, you can like pass something to it, or you can like make like a dictionary or an array or something like a default variable at the start of the function. Like only set it the first time and then it sets it again, so they like end up having to clean it and throw it in the garbage. Huh. Mm -hmm. Well, be on the lookout for that. <laughs> I mean, so there's some weird things with those, but yeah. it's like case by case for it. Um, okay, interesting. I'll have to look more into that. Uh, okay, so let's see. What did we do? Oh, well, we made some employees. Okay. So we talked about like first name is very specific to John, first name is specific to Josh. They have the same variable name, but different values, right? Um, now we have us, uh, so that was instance variables, and then we have class variables, right? Um, and uh, who can tell me what's the difference between a class variable and an instance variable? Yeah. That's that one locked away. Let's see. Okay, go for it. So when it is a class variable would be um, would be access and change by the Yep. And uh variable would be 
Absolutely, right? So, um, uh, yeah, totally killed it. So if I did, uh, if I went here and I said, uh, Josh got um, last name equals uh, cool. Uh, and then I printed my last name. That's only going to change for me, right? If I print John's last name, it'll still be young. And so I'm only, this is specific to me, right? But we can have a class variable. And I think we did something like this last week, but just to, uh, we can do, no, so there's two, two ways you would kind of see this used. Um, one, we have a number of employees. And this is actually useless once you have a database, but for now we can do this. Uh, equals zero. And then we can say every time that init function call, calls, we can increase this, right? Because we know that init gets called when there's a new instance, which means we're creating a new employee. So we can come down here and we access class variables. First, we have to call the class itself and then the variable. And I can just say plus equals one, right? So now let's, uh, let's do, we will, uh, let's print. First, let me uh, do print employee dot number of employees. Copy that. Whoops. Paste it there and paste it there. And I'm going to get rid of all these other print statements. So let's talk about what's going to happen before I run this. First, I'm going to print the value of number of employees. Then I'm going to create an employee. I'm going to print it again create another employee and print it again. So what numbers do we expect to see? Zero, one, two. We're actually gonna see all, we should hopefully see all. Can we do, right? So now this is me accessing that class variable, um, which can be accessed outside. Every instance is accessing it because it is, um, like as it instantiates John, it, create, it um, updates it. As it instantiates Josh, it updates it as well, right? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, classes are going to have one and it. Okay, so you can have two No. Um, and I don't know why you wouldn't need to, right? Anything you want to do, you just do in this one. Um, so this is one one kind of way, maybe I want to keep track of some information about the class. Um, another thing you might see, and this is actually, we're going to cover two things at the same time here. So um, you have this idea of constants. We talked about them in JavaScript. We actually initialize them um, uh, in a specific way in JavaScript. We say const, and then I always say pi, because pi won't change, right? So, like, so const pi equals 3.14. Um, and you can't change those. If you try to reassign those, JavaScript will get mad at you. Uh, um, Python has that idea, although it isn't strict about reassignment. So you got to be careful because you, you can usually reassign them. But if you want to tell Python that you're going to have a constant, you just use all caps. So if we say, um, like, Maybe we have a number like this that is never going to change, right? Um, or is rarely going to ch ever change. Uh, we can declare it as a um, what is a constant, but I'm also because of where I'm declaring it, it's also going to be a class variable, right? So I'm going to be able to access it the same way. Does that make sense? Cool. Um, Raise them up down here. Yeah. Actually, don't. I think it will increase it, which is very frustrating, but I think it will increase it. Let's test that real quick. Yeah, it just doesn't. So, uh, print, uh, let's print employee dot raise them out. And then, uh,
let's plus equal uh, one, and then we'll print it again. Yeah, it'll do. So um, this is, I think, as far as I know, and I could be wrong on this, because I don't use these very often, this is more like to tell people reading your code, hey, this is a constant. Like, don't mess with this variable, right? Um, but you'll see it. You'll see it. No, it'll tell you. It'll, it'll, it will not like. It will not let you do it if you try to reassign. Um, okay. Uh, so that is class variables. We also talk. Or I'm sorry. That is yeah. Instance variables, class variables. We talked about constants. The last thing is global variables. This is weird in Python, but I'm going to go over it. You're never going to use it, so I'm going to go over it real quick. Um, I mean, you're not going to use it here. But uh, let me even write my header. OK, so a global variable, just the concept of a global variable you'll hear is just a variable that is available everywhere in your program, right? And you almost never want this, right? You want your data confined in where it should be, like data. That's why we have classes, right? Classes are a way to encapsulate data and protect it, keep it safe. So that like data for a specific instance should only be able to be manipulated by that instance. But there is this idea of a global variable that is accessible everywhere and that could be changed by any function or any class, right? Um, and so real quick, we could do something like uh, some function. And let's say name equals uh, Josh. And then let's say, I, um, let's run the function. So what is running this function do? All it does is create name, right? It doesn't do anything else. Um, but then let's try to print name. I'm going to get our favorite error, name is not defined, right? Because the function ran, it created name, but it did two things actually happened. One, it created name only in the function scope. So it's useless to me outside that scope. But two, once the function's done, it doesn't give a shit about its variables anymore. So it doesn't, it forgot about it, right? So it ran it, created it, and got rid of it. So all that happened. So now, what I could do if I wanted a function to run and create a global uh, variable, I hope this is how I did this this morning. I don't remember. If I declare it name and then I set it down here with this global keyword, now it will work. Because so the function will run, it will create a um, variable called name, and immediately it'll bust it out of the function, put it into the global scope. Then we'll set it real quick and then we'll quit, but it won't forget about the variable, right? Because it, it because of this global keyword, now the whole Python program is remembering it and we can print it down here. We could also do it if statements or other things. Does that make sense? Can I change the value? Probably. Yeah. Cool. Questions? Yeah. Go for it. What's the, I mean, what's the application for that? Like, why would I do that instead of like, outside the function? I have don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of a case where I've like seen one or used one. Um, if I mean, not in like any web development stuff I've done. I haven't seen it. Uh, yeah, but you should just be aware that it is there. And um, I mean, there might be there's probably other things that you can do in programming where this is helpful. But web development wise, I'm not really sure. Uh, but I just want to make you aware of it. It's a thing that existed. Other questions? Yeah. All I can think of is the blue light hand that's a great way to think about it. So global variables are the Kool-Aid man. Are we all good on that? Cool. Cool. Uh, uh, other questions about variables or scope? I know that that was a little bit longer than it needed to be, but I want to make sure that we're really clear on that stuff because um, these simple things get you tripped up. Cool. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, that's a great question. I keep using them back and forth, right? Yeah. Because in Ruby, they call everything a method. Um, 
I'll, I gotta look this up to make sure I'm 100% on this. My, my understanding is like methods are things that are like attached to a class, right? So if I have an, it, like anything I put in my class is a method that I can put on that class. Any other just random uh, um, function is a function, right? So functions are just kind of outside. I, I accidentally use them interchangeably, so you can call me on that if you want. Um, because of the way Ruby is structured, everything is automatically a method because everything's an object in Ruby, but that is already not important to me. Sorry, way too long. Uh, anyway, yeah, yeah. Method, class, function, everything. Uh, cool. Uh, okay. Um, let's just take our 10 minute break, come back. I have like two, three more things to go over and then we'll, uh, then we'll get you going. For this yes. So John is grading those right now.